in this lecture we're going to discuss what is the meaning of the term electronegativity now electronegativity is the tendency for an atom to gain or attract electrons now you've already been familiar with uh, group one uh, metals losing electrons and non-metals gaining electrons for example you're probably aware that fluorine makes a minus one ion it has a tendency to gain electrons chlorine makes a minus one ion as well it also has a tendency to gain electrons Whereas uh, metals on the left hand side of the periodic table, group 1, 2, etc., they have a tendency to lose electrons. So I'm going to discuss why uh, the elements on the right side uh, have a higher tendency to gain electrons and the elements on the left hand side have a higher tendency to lose electrons. So if you look at the periodic table, electronegative D is going to increase across the period. As you move to the right, uh, group 7 elements would have a higher tendency to gain electrons, group 1 elements would have a higher tendency. To not gain electrons they would actually be losing electrons so so different elements have a different tendency to gain or lose electrons now I've drawn uh, 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 one period of the period table this is period number two uh, so I've uh, drawn lithium is in group one beryllium group two uh, boron in group three carbon in group four and so on so I've uh, drawn uh, the atoms of all these elements so lithium has three protons and it has three electrons now if you look at the nucleus the nucleus only has a plus three charge which means that the force of attraction between these three protons and these three electrons is not going to be very strong because they're only they're only three protons and as you move across the period the nuclear charge keeps on increasing the number of protons in the nucleus keeps on increasing so for example uh, carbon has six protons over here nitrogen has seven protons oxygen has eight protons and fluorine and so on so if you look at fluorine Fluorine has a total of nine protons, which means that the nuclear charge uh, or the nu charge of the nucleus, the positive charge of the nucleus is plus nine, which is very strong compared to lithium, which only has three protons. So this plus nine would have a very, very strong attraction for electrons, although it has nine electrons, but the force of attraction between these nine protons and these nine electrons, it's going to be very strong because you have a lot of negative charge and you have a lot of positive charge. So the force of attraction is going to be very strong. So this is the reason why fluorine has a higher tendency to gain electrons because it has a lot of protons in its nucleus. Oxygen also has a very high tendency to gain electrons because it has eight protons, but that tendency to gain electrons would be lesser compared to fluorine because fluorine has more protons. Similarly, nitrogen would have even slightly lesser tendency to gain electrons because it has seven protons. So the force of attraction for the electron is going to become weaker. So as you move to the left, uh, beryllium has four, pro, four protons, so the force of attraction for the electrons is not going to be very strong. And uh, the weakest force of attraction in this particular period, period number two, would be for lithium. Lithium would have very weak force of attraction for its electrons. So if there's an electron, which element would have a higher tendency to gain electron? It's going to be fluorine because fluorine has nine protons. The attraction for electrons is going to be a lot stronger. So fluorine would have a stronger attraction for electrons and lithium would have a very weak force of, uh, force of attraction for the electrons. I'm not discussing neon over here because neon has no place to put those electrons, although it would have a very strong force of attraction for electrons. But since its shell is complete, it has no space available to, to put an extra electron. So let's not discuss neon when it comes to gaining electrons. So as you move across the period, uh, the force of attraction for the electrons increases. The nuclear charge keeps on increasing so that we can we can write down and we can discuss the reason as you move across the period. The nuclear charge or you can say the number of protons increases. So moving across the period, nuclear charge, the number of protons increases. Whereas as you can see, that the, the number of shells are exactly the same. The, uh, lithium has two shells. Fluorine also has two shells. So the, relatively, the sizes are almost pretty much the same. So the shielding effect remains constant. So shielding remains constant. And in other lectures, I've also discussed what shielding effect is. Uh, these outer electrons would be attracted by the nucleus. So there's one shell inside that is shielding the nucleus. So it's blocking the positive charge from reaching the outer electrons. But it's constant in every atom. 
for example this outer electron would be attracted to these three protons but there are two electrons coming in between uh, these two electrons would be attracted to the nucleus of beryllium but there are two electrons coming in between so every time the shielding there's one shell inside that is that is covering the nucleus and it's blocking the positive uh, nuclear charge from reaching the outer electron so that's what shielding effect is so in all these atoms the shielding effect remains constant and the size of the atom slightly decreases so atomic radius it decreases and why is it decreasing because if you have nine protons the force of attraction for the electrons is going to be very strong so those nine electrons would be attracted very strongly and they which is why the size of the knee of the fluorine atom would be would be lesser because the electrons are being attracted by the nucleus very strongly so it's going to keep them tightly held together and close to it in the case of lithium it only has three protons so the three electrons would be far away because the force of attraction between the electrons and the nucleus is not going to be very strong hence this electron would be slightly farther away from the nucleus of lithium so as you move across the period there's more nuclear charge more force of attraction so the size of the atom the atomic radius of the atoms also slightly decreases although each atom has two shells but since the attraction for electrons is greater on the right hand side hence the atom would be slightly smaller now i'm going to discuss the electronegativity down a group so uh, what you need to know is that electronegativity the tendency for an atom to gain electrons decreases down the group and i have picked group 7 so i have picked three elements in group 7 fluorine which is at the top of group 7 chlorine and then bromine so as you move down the group the size of the atom increases which basically means uh, that atomic radius increases increases and there is more shielding so shielding increases as well shielding increases as well so there's going to be a stronger force of attraction for electrons if the atom is smaller for fluorine the attraction for electrons is going to be stronger and the reason it's going to be stronger is that that electron would be very close to the nucleus it's a small tiny atom the electron is going to be very close to the nucleus and there's not a lot of number of shells that are coming in between so the force of attraction of the nucleus uh, that the nucleus is going to exert would be uh, relatively unshielded and it's going to attract this electron very strongly if you move to chlorine the electron would be further away from the nucleus so the distance between the nucleus the 17 protons over here attracting this electron the distance increases it's now further away and there are more shells coming in between which means that shielding is going to increase so this these shells these electrons in these shells are going to block the charge on the nucleus from reaching this electron so the attraction is going to decrease and if you move to bromine and if you keep an electron next to bromine that electron would be much further away from the nucleus of bromine because bromine is a bigger atom so it would be much further away from the nucleus of bromine and there would be a lot of shells coming in between so the force of attraction of this nucleus that this nucleus exerts uh would be weakened by the shells coming in between so this electron is not going to experience a strong pull from the nucleus so as you move down the group uh the atomic radius increases and the shielding increases hence as you move down the group there's a lesser attraction for electrons so fluorine attracts electrons very strongly but bromine is not going to attract electrons very strongly because of its larger size and the huge number of shells that it has although there's one factor that's actually going against that and that factor is the nucleus if you look at the nucleus fluorine only has nine protons so which means nine protons are not going to have a very strong force of attraction bromine on the other hand is 35 protons so there's one factor that's going against that but there are two factors which are stating that the force of attraction for the electrons is going to be weaker so since there are more factors that are weakening the nuclear charge and that are decreasing the attraction for electrons hence we not uh, this increase in nuclear ch charge gets cancelled out so smaller atoms this smaller atom of fluorine is going to have a stronger force of attraction for electrons 
even though it has lesser protons whereas bromine on the other hand is going to uh, have a weaker force of attraction for electrons even though it has more protons but the huge number of shells that are coming in between and the larger distance between the electron and the nucleus that would ensure that the electron is not attracted very strongly even though it has more protons so as you move down the group the tendency for an atom to attract electrons decreases now there's a polling scale and that polling scale gives a numerical scale for electronegativity so these electronegativities there's a technical way to measure the electronegativities or the tendency for an atom to gain electrons so what we have learned is that electronegativity increases to the right of the periodic table as you move across the period electronegativities are going to increase the tendency for an atom to gain electron increases but if you move down the group or down any group electronegativity decreases because bigger atoms would have a lower tendency to attract electrons so this is the polling scale and this is the entire periodic table that's drawn so the elements that are shown in dark red these are the ones that are more electronegative these are on the extreme right and the top so the elements in the periodic table that are at the extreme right and right at the top they are the most electronegative elements and as you move down the group the electronegativity would decrease so if you move from left to right electronegativity increases if you move down the group electronegativity decreases so this applies to all the groups so in group 6 uh, oxygen is the most electronegative element so as you move down the group the electronegativity decreases same is the case with uh, group 5 the electronegativity down the group decreases so this corner over here this uh, the corner of the periodic table on the left hand side left hand side and the bottom corner these are the least electronegative elements they are the ones that are going to lose electrons very easily and the ones on the top right corner they are the ones that are the most electronegative elements so always remember uh, you just need to qualitatively remember how electronegativity is varies varies across the period and why they vary across the period the ones on the right are more electronegative so any element on the right side of the periodic table that's going to be more electronegative that would have a higher tendency to gain electrons and the ones at the bottom are the least electronegative so any element at the bottom of the periodic table that uh, that element would have an electronegativity which would be lower than the elements that are at the top so for example iodine is less electronegative compared to bromine bromine is less electronegative compared to chlorine chlorine is why in the same way less electronegative compared to fluorine so you just need to know the general picture of uh, which elements are electronegative and which elements are not very electronegative